This video will demonstrate the setup for Jack Router on a Raspberry Pi. The first thing I would suggest is going to get the AutoStatic audio repositories. The, these links will be in the show notes. Here's a page about it. And again, these links will be in the show notes. So, and go to those links and get this repository, and then re uh, reload everything. And the first thing you'll want to do is go get QJack CTL right here. And once you do that, it will load in the Jack D and all the other stuff that you'll need to get started. So once you've downloaded and got this installed, the other thing that they, they suggest is make yourself uh, a member of the audio group, which I am, so I have a check mark here. So there's the audio group. Close. This is just the user settings, the manage groups. So once you've done that, you'll have to reboot. And then the other thing is they suggest is going into etc. slash security slash limits dot com c o n f and then add these two lines at audio dash r t prio ninety nine at audio dash memlock unlimited save and you, you may have to do this with admin rights. Save, then reboot, and then it, it will uh, be registered on Synaptic the next time you open it. So we have that taken care of, and I already have Synaptic running, or loaded anyway. So then click Setup, and these are the settings that worked for my Raspberry Pi. I have a Raspberry Pi 2B, and I noticed that the fastest I could get the native sound card of the Pi which is this BCM 2835, was at 480, 48,000 sample rate, and I had to use four periods and buffers. That gave me a reasonable latency and a lot less X runs and a lot less pops and clicks from those X, X runs. So in this prefix, Jack D space dash S, options, and display were default. I didn't mess with those. And then in miscellaneous, you have the ability or the option to select enable DBUS. And if you load up the Pulse Jack module, which I find useful, and you uh, install Pulse Audio, this will bring up a Pulse Audio Jack interface, which is very useful. Uh, but that's optional. Right now, I won't do that one. And let's go ahead and get out of here. And I think most of these settings were default as far as the other stuff. So cancel. Let's see if it'll get run in here. We'll hit start. And there we go. And if you can see this on the video, this RT will flash if it's working. It'll be go on and off so that your real time was, was engaged. So here's the messages that you get. Don't worry about what all this means. You'd probably have to Google everything. But you're looking for errors. So far, I don't see any. So it created, initiated the real time and gave it the priority 440. So that's good. There's a sample rate. There's the buffer size. There's the uh, command line instructions. Just as you could do this from terminal using this message as well. So we look for status in real time mode. It says yes, good. Buffer, yep, it's what we set it. 48K for the sample rate's correct. 
DSP loads not too bad when it's just idling, which is good. And this X run is good to keep an eye on it. Because if you get too much going, or you get too much browser, too many things up at once, you may start to see more of these. So you can pay attention and, and figure out how to get less of those, and, or what application is causing you to start running these things. And when usually when you next, get an X run, you're going to get a pop or a click. All right, so on the Pi in this setup again, we're only using playback only since the Raspberry Pi does not have a duplex sound card. It only has audio output, and that's the analog one that I'm using with that eighth inch uh, speaker jack, headphone jack. And up here, the driver is Alsa. The only thing I had to add was this dash capital S. And that that uh, allowed this to start working for my system here. So over here is where you have any Jack Aware apps. They'll uh, pop in here and then you can hear them. I'll show you how to connect that here. So let's go get a Jack Aware sound app called Aqualung. There it shows up. It's already connected. So let's go ahead and play it and see how it goes. Let's see what the, uh, so we're at minus 12. We'll start there. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is, is Twit. Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Okay, so we know that it's working. Now for MIDI, you have some ALSA MIDI, but I found the uh, KX Studios ALSA Jack uh, Bridge for MIDI works great. So on here, you'd have to go grab it on by Synaptic, uh, but I'll I'll start it up first. Dash E, I believe. There we go. Now you've got some virtual MIDI cables that you can use. And there'll be other applications where you'll get a port for a MIDI input when you use A2J MIDI D. Let's go find another Jack Aware application. Let's get the Jack keyboard here. This is a MIDI keyboard that runs on Jack. And there it is. So you have MIDI out. And if you had some other application here, you could just draw a line from there to there. And you just highlight where you want it to connect. Hit connect or disconnect. That's how you connect these things if they don't do that themselves. And let's see if I have any other Jack Aware applications. As you see, it didn't take much. I think this one is a application that has Jack Aware. And we'll go ahead and start Aqualung again. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly. At C -A -C so it just generally shows you other applications and how to connect to them. Let's go in here and see if I have any other ones. Carla is an excellent application. I'll go over that in a minute because there are other options as far as connection bays. Carla also it comes uh, with its own set of plugins, and you can tell it where the, the rest of your plugins are, and it'll grab them all in one application. This is uh, very useful, this jack rack.
This allows you to bring in lots of LADSPO plugins. So you just figure out what you want in there, and it'll bring it up. So let's go ahead and do an amplitude to a simple amp. So expand. So if you wanted Aqualung to go into an amplifier, so we'll disconnect. Now we'll reconnect to Jack Rack, then Jack Rack over to the system. Now everything that comes in to Jack Rack will go to your system. So you can amplify it or apply bandwidth filters, graphic equalizers, stereo effects. So that's Jack Rack. So we'll disengage that. And let's see if I have any more in here. Here's a meter. So we'll start this up again. And we'll connect it to a meter. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. So you can look in your package manager and type in Jack and then uh, see what comes up. And you may have quite a few uh, Jack Aware applications that are there that are there for sound and audio that you might find quite useful. So for an alternative connection bay besides QJack CTL, once you get this started, you could also bring up Patchage. See so if I can find it here. And this is kind of a graphical connection. So here's Aqualung. So that you can just disconnect, draw a line, reconnect. And it should duplicate it over here too. So I'll go ahead and take all of it off. And over here it's not connected anymore. Then I'll connect it here. So they work in parallel. It's sometimes it's just a little easier to see things on a graphical framework like this. And let's see if we can go here and find Carla. Hopefully this won't crash everything with all the video recording uh, running. Oh, there we go. So Carla has its own uh, graphical patch bay. I find this a, a tremendous application. And then you can add a new plugin. And you got tons of them depending on the, you know what you downloaded. So these are LV2. Go ahead and uh, do this and do a refresh and I'll show you what I mean. Just go open the filters. So these are the kind of effects you can use with Carla. And you'll you'll only find Carla in the autostatic repository. And this is just where you tell it to where all the it'll come default, but if you have any other directories, you can redirect Carla to go to those directories that you add or remove here. So this is how I have it set up. Jack, multiple clients. So that's Carla. Now I think uh, that's pretty much the basics that you'll need to get this running and, and start looking for some Jack apps to try and use. We have, it looks like we have about two X runs that started up. So again, you can expect a few of these now and then. And if you get too many, you may have to readjust your settings. So you can maybe go up to 512. You're starting to get into a little longer latency when you go up to 1024. So you try to get as low as you can. And you can change the sample rate. Every sound card is a little bit different. It may respond you know, with slightly improved performance if you fiddle around with this.
So those are the basic steps to get Jack Browder working, set up and working on a Raspberry Pi. Thank you for watching.